Hey, hey, assistant coach, how are you guys doing? It is me, Johnny Sports, and welcome back to the Liverpool Career Mode. This is episode number four of season number three, and I want to thank you guys so much for the insane support throughout this series. I honestly can't say how happy I am because of all this. So if you guys could smash that like button once again, that would be amazing. In the last episode, I have asked you, assistant coaches, which of our players should be our captain, and surprisingly... Most of you said Coutinho and I was not expecting that at all. We have given it to Sturridge at the, at the end of the last episode and now you guys have decided Coutinho should be the captain of Liverpool and he will now be exactly that. Right here you can see a starting lineup filled with young talents and really low rated players and the reason for that is the Capital One Cup. The cup that no one cares about, there's still the FA Cup to be played and the Capital One Cup is only filling up my schedule so Arsenal just go ahead and take it away from me man, I'm not really interested in getting my players injured in a Capital One Cup or stuff like that, so that was a decision I made assistant coaches, I hope you guys are okay with it, because if we are going for a domestic cup, it will be the FA Cup, and this time hopefully we'll be able to get it. Capital One Cup has been won by us twice, and it has never really helped us, so in this season especially, where we are aspiring to win the title, it will not help us at all in the long run, so let's just get rid of the Capital One Cup and free up our schedule a little bit. The first match of today is against West Bromwich Albion and uh, this is our starting lineup. Obviously not filled with those youngsters this time, it's the best starting eleven and the first match for Coutinho as the captain of Liverpool. Let's see what he can do, hopefully we will have a good start into his captaining career. Here's Markovic with the first header, the first chance chance for Liverpool but that one doesn't really hit the target properly Marco Royce in the last episode man he just tore apart our opponents and against Benfica he scored three goals what an amazing performance that was from him and now it's Coutinho the first chance and that one will be a fancy shot from Coutinho trying to lob the keeper but sadly that doesn't really work out and now it's West Brom on the attack Jakob getting past my defenders passing it to Rondon who does have a lot of shot power in him. But let's move on into the 45th minute. Coutinho with the pass to Storage. Storage now cutting inside, shoots! And it gets saved by Foster. He's a really good goalkeeper. Last time we played against him, he really was amazing. And now he's just basically doing the same. Storage now getting past the players, passing it to Coutinho. Coutinho back to Royce. I wanted to pass it to Lewandowski with Coutinho, but it didn't really work out. And now we are on a free kick. 38 yards. Marco Royce with a really nice shot, but the keeper does get to it once again. He is on top form, that guy. Markovic now with the skills. We had to try and get that first goal in. Markovic is getting past these players, passing it to Coutinho. Coutinho with the scoop turn, and he gets taken down. Our captain is getting us the penalty. And since we do have a lot of high rated players in our team, I will give it to that guy with the best penalty statistics. And that is definitely Marco Royce in our squad. He will take it top left corner. There we go. The goalkeeper is not even moving. It's 1-0 for Liverpool. This guy is just on top form. And hopefully that will not change very quickly. Because last season, I know he has been criticized a lot. But in this one, he has started off really well. And he's becoming one of the most important players in our team. Now he's been subbed off. Divock Origi, Angel Correa and Bruma are joining into the game. Markovic now on the corner kick over to Bruma, the guy that just joined into the game has scored a goal but sadly it does count as an own goal because it did come off two of the West Bromwich players but take a look at this right here, it's the header from him then their defender is heading it onto his own goalkeeper then it bounces off his back and goes in but I don't care, we will take it, here it is, 90th minute, it's West Brom trying to score at least one goal in this one with Rondon but that will be the end of the match it's three points for Liverpool once again hopefully we can keep this good form up and perform well in the future as well but let's see what uh, the league table is looking like later on here is the training first up 
Correa is going up to the 81 rating. Yes, Angel Correa is now a better player. His finishing and his shot power are improving, so that will help him out to be a better striker. Liverpool now in that first spot, Rosenborg right behind us, Benfica in that third spot. And then we have Schalke in there, who we have beaten with Marco Royce in the last episode. Sorry, I messed it up. It wasn't against Benfica. Did I say he did that against Benfica? No, he did it against Schalke. So sorry if I got that wrong, but here we are. It is Liverpool 2-0 against Rosenborg, and that gets us three more points for our squad in the Champions League group stages. In the league, we are three points behind Arsenal and Crystal Palace is our opponent and they are three points away from us. So I decided to play this match at home against Crystal Palace, my FIFA 15 career mode team. I loved it. It was an amazing journey. It lasted for five seasons and uh, hopefully someday we might see each other again. But here it is, Crystal Palace. This is their starting lineup. They have Wickham in the striking position, Pontian right behind him in the camp position and obviously our team will remain the same as the last game. Here it is, the first attack from Crystal Palace with Pontian scoring the goal and making it 1-0 at Anfield for Crystal Palace and now he's celebrating it with his teammates from the bench, Campbell is hugging Punchin and the away fans are quite happy about that one. Once again, I tried to defend properly, but somehow I left just a little spot for them to take a shot. And obviously, they will use that opportunity to just score an amazing shot. And here it is, Marco Royce with the pass to Matic. Can we get the equalizer early on in this match? But no! It doesn't happen. Matic is obviously not a striker, so I would have wished to have another person taking that shot. But here it is. Johan Kabai, the new favorite player for Crystal Palace in real life, I reckon, because they have made a few songs for him. He is scoring against us. It is 2-0. And at that point, I was quite upset. I was not expecting to lose against Crystal Palace and give them the chance to get back in it. But here it is. I'm messing up the throw-in. And then we do concede once again and it's Campbell who at first was celebrating the goal scored by his teammates as a substitute and now he is scoring his own goal and it is 3-0 for Crystal Palace against Liverpool and yes I tried my best still losing but I scored at least one goal with Origi who has joined in as a substitute and then has made it 3-1 but it was too late. There was sadly no way for our team to come back into this match and perform at least a bit better and uh, maybe get an equalizer at some point. It didn't work out. Boateng now 88 rated. He has gone up from an 87 to an 88 since he joined from Chelsea. Nemanja Matic, same with him, joined from Chelsea and now he's an 87 rated player. Uh, Marco Royce, as you guys know, is now 89 rated. But Bruma has gone up to the 80 rating. He was in the training a lot and now he has gone up. Here's a big, big talent. Lisandro Palacio, 76 to 94 potential from Argentina. And then we are taking a look at the other scouting update. It is from Portugal, 74 to 94 potential. Already 17 years old, 5 foot 10 tall. And he could already be at like a 60 or 62 rating. So that looks like a good talent as well. But after taking a look at the messages from the scouts, we are now taking a look at the personal messages from our players. Coutinho wants a new contract, he wants 190k and I'm basically uh, spending all my money to give it to him. And then I get this message, Coutinho contract standoff. It seems like he doesn't really want to accept it, but two days earlier than that, he accepted the contract. So can please any of you assistant coaches just tell me what happened right here because I would have understood it if the accepting the contract message would have come after that uh, contract standoff one uh, where he might have thought about it but here you can see he accepted the 190k wages his contract is now for three years and nine months so I really don't really understand what is going on right there it makes no sense but please let me know in the comments down below is Coutinho now 
uh, accepting that contract or is he still able to decline it? I really don't understand what's going on right there. But Liverpool, after that loss against Crystal Palace, has dropped down to the third spot in the league. Manchester United right above us and Arsenal still in that first spot. Even though they lost their game as well, they are still on the 19 points. Chelsea is our next opponent and Chelsea is doing really bad this season and it makes me happy because in the first season we have actually made them champions by beating Manchester City. In the second season they have won the league title by themselves but here it is they have started off really badly because Sturridge does hit the crossbar in the early minutes and here you can see I am pressing up high I'm trying to get to the ball Lewandowski now pressing Kale and then there is a big mistake from the goalkeeper but Leva is not able to get to that one and some people in the comments have been saying that I should not say Leva to Lewandowski I'm a Bayern Munich fan I live in Germany and everyone here calls him Leva no one calls him Louis like come on what the hell is Louis that makes no sense I've never heard of that and I will never call Lewandowski that name he will be Leva for me that's it. But here it is. We are making some changes. Bruma, Origi and Henderson joining in. So far in this match it was pretty much balanced out and I couldn't get past Chelsea's defense properly in order to score. Here we are starting a new attack though. Nemanja Matic passing it to Markovic. He has some space but decides to cut inside. He has too much space now. And that gave him the opportunity to take the shot, but no, that gets saved by the goalkeeper, an amazing save by Courtois, and here's another chance. But Courtois makes it look easy, and he gets to every single shot so far, and I just was desperate to just score a goal. Now Remy on the ball, passing it over to his teammates, it's a pass over to Oscar, his shot! will be a dangerous one but this time our goalkeeper is performing now Bruma cutting inside no one attacking him it is a pass over to Divock Origi he's in the penalty area takes this shot but he gets taken down and that gives us a penalty even though in my opinion that was not a penalty at all and on top of that he also gets a yellow card now Lewandowski on the penalty to get us the victory and it is 1-0 for Liverpool Lewandowski scoring it as Royce has been subbed off an incredible finish to this game if we can hold on to this scoreline Lewandowski good job mate but that was not a deserved penalty for Liverpool. I've seen worse tackles which have not gotten a penalty. But here we go. Three points against Chelsea. Sometimes you have to win these ugly matches. And it is only one goal to separate both teams from each other. And it is three points for Liverpool. And we are still training the same players. And that will be the question of the day for you assistant coaches. You will see it later on. But here it is. The objectives for this season. I still can't believe that our team was expecting us to win the Champions League before we even bought Lewandowski and uh, Boateng into our squad but right now hopefully that's something we can achieve but at first the biggest goal for myself personally is to win the Barclays Premier League. Now we are on 19 points, Arsenal only one point ahead of us, they have lost uh, their last match or no sorry they have gotten a draw in the last match and the one before that they have lost. But here's the question for you assistant coaches, which impact substitute should I train? By impact substitute, I mean my offensive players and Correa, Origi, Andrade and Bruma. These are the ones you can choose from. Let's see who you think deserves to be trained. But this episode, player of the episode is... No one, because it was pretty much balanced out. So I hope you guys enjoy the assistant coaches showcase. Have a nice day and we see each other on the next video. Peace.